you know, stop. So the next annotations, there are a lot of annotations are there in test engine. So from suit to till method, you have annotations. So the annotation first one is a before suit. So before suit, annotation will run before all the tests in the suit have run. That means a suit is nothing but a collection of test cases. So for example, you have 50 test cases in each test in G class, one at the test method will be there. So first before suit code will execute before running all the 50 test at the test methods. That means first before suit code will execute. Any configurations to run your application, you can put that code in the before suit annotation. That's a before suit, a thread before suit. So here all methods are non-static methods in test engine. So not like JNIT. JNIT two methods are static, remaining four methods are non-static. But here, every method is a non-static method. So after suit, this is the structure of before suit, at that before suit, public wide before suit, method name you can change if you want. So parentheses, curly bracket, write the configurations, like you know, setting up the environment, uh, you know, deploying your application code in the build, so that all things you can do in the before suit. So what you want to run before your test cases start before running. So that code, you can place it here in the before suit. So again, before suit code will execute only once. It won't repeat any block of code. So only once it will execute for entire suit. So next after suit. So this annotated method will run after all the tests in the suit have run. After completing all the test cases, 50 test cases, finally, after suit block of code will execute. So first annotation and public wide method name. So here you can write the cleanup activity, basically cleanup activity, okay? All your test cases are done, maybe collecting the logs, uh, clearing the environments, destroying the environments, or closing the browsers, such kind of, you no. Know, final post uh, test cases, what you want to do, that kind of activities you can put here in the after suit. That's a before suit and after suit. Next, before test. So before test and after test is there. It's a pair of you know, annotations all. So one before is setting up the things. After is tear down activities. T down activate means clean up. So that's the before and after. So, but before test, after test. If you want to understand this, you need to understand the suit file. So let me show you the suit file uh, format so that you'll get a better idea. So what is a, a suit file? A suit file is an XML file in testng. Testng.xml file, we call that. So there is a, good website for the test ng test ng documentation you said you will get that so the best cedric prepared a very nice documentation in test ng so he's the father of this right uh, you can just go test ng so you have a direct uh, website will be there so you don't need to go anywhere uh, I need to go to test ng documentation. See, you will get a direct test ng documentation. So, this is the one you can see test ng dot org documentation. Just click on this. So, you will get all the so testng.xml I was talking. This is the first suit tag will be there. Then every tag 
has an un, uh, no attributes, right? See, tag after attributes are there, name, verbose, parallel. There are many attributes are there in the suit to tag inside. This is the start tag, and this is the suit end tag. So in between that, there are many tags, right? Suit to tag after, there is a test tag. Test tag, name equal to no package. Then classes tag, classes tag below, you have a class tag. So classes tag inside, you can specify your test ng classes. Test ng class names. So like class tag, name equal to no package test. Then close the classes tag. Then test tag. So this is a test tag started here, ending here. But in between the test tag, there is a classes tag. And between the classes close tag, you have so many annotations. You, you, you can write many classes here. You can specify all your classes here. So which classes you want to run as a suit? That's a one test tag. Then another test tag. So name equal to regression and a classes tag. Then you can specify all your individual classes with a class tag inside the classes tag. So the class tag name equal to package name dot class name. Package name dot class name. So you can specify which class you want to run in this suit. You can specify all the classes with a class tag. Then close the classes tag. Okay. Then test tag is closing. Here, how many test tags are there? This is the one test tag. This is the another test tag. So like that, you can write multiple test tags in the suit based on your requirement. But generally, uh, this is the XML file. Testng.xml is the suit file. Basically, XML tags. Sir, I have seen HTML tags. What is this XML tag? HTML tags are fixed, right? You cannot change for web elements. XML is you can create your own tags. So see, these are the suit tag test tag. This is based on our test thing. We create they created these tags. But this also now for a test ng.xml, these are the fixed. But you can change your XML whenever you want. You can create your customized tags. That's XML means. So XML basically it will uh, no, allow you to create your own tags. That's a XML tags means. You can specify package names also instead of class names like this. Suit tag, test tag, then packages. Above we have seen classes, right? You, even you can specify, I don't want, for example, in my package there are a 20 test case. A 20 test case, I cannot mention here. That's a burden to me, right? Instead of that, you can write and run entire package. You just specify the package tag, name equal to the package name. So in this package, how many test ng classes are there? All will be run. So that's a, a test ng.xml file. Okay. So this is the one I want to focus here. This is the one, if you understand here, one suit tag inside, multiple test tags are there. Multiple test tags are there. Each test tag inside, you have a multiple classes with a class tag you are specifying, right? So if you understand this structure, and I can explain before suit. So before test means, before test annotation means, the annotated method will be run before any test method belonging to the classes inside the test tag is run. That means this classes test method execution before, first address before test block code will execute. And uh, so anything the, for the particular test tag before you want to execute some code, then you can use address before test annotation. Then, after test is, so after completing these all classes, these all classes, then it will go to after test, after test. So the annotated method will be run after all the test methods belong to the classes 
inside the test tag have run. That means, so all these classes test methods are over, then controller will go to at the rate after test annotation block. So this is the after test annotation block. At the rate after test, public void after test method name, and you write a whatever you want to write a cleanup activity. So this is the before test and after test. Again, you have one more test attack. Again, controller will go to before test. So before test, it will go here. If one more test tag is there, this is the tag level annotation. It will repeat for every test tag. That's a before test means. So what is the before test? Before test will execute before any test method execution inside the test tag. And after test is after completing all the test methods inside the test tag have completed, then after test annotation block will execute. If one more test tag is there, again controller will go to before test first, then it will come to this class and then this class, all are finished these classes, then it will go before, after ending this test tag, it will go to after test annotation. So that means every test tag, the before test is repeating and after test is repeating. So is it clear on before test and after test? Any questions? Okay. Okay, cool. So before groups, the list of groups, you can group the test cases, right? Like smoke test cases, sanity test cases, functional test cases, regression test cases, like that. If you group the test cases, those grouping test case execution before you want to execute some code, then you can take at the before groups. If you have groups only, you can use this uh, at the before groups annotation. Something you want to execute before the, all the test cases before, then you can use a before groups annotation. So the list of groups that this configuration method will run before. So this method is going to give a guarantee to run shortly before the first test method that belongs to any of the groups is invoked. So that's the before groups. After groups, so the list of groups, this configuration method will run after, after all the group test cases are completed, then it will go to after groups annotation block. So what you want to write, it's up to you in your hand. The cleanup, cleanup activities are post group test cases after what code you want to run that you can place in this after groups annotation. So the next annotation is at the rate before class. We have seen in JN2. At the rate before class, there we are calling at the rate before all. Same functionality. At the rate before all, at the rate before class is same functionality. So at the rate before class is the class level annotation. So the met annotator method will be run before the first test method in the current class is invoked. In the current class, before executing any at the rate test method, first before class code will execute. There also it happened the same. First before all executed, then rest of the code is executed. Here also, so in the class level, in, in your particular current class, any test method execution before, first before class code will execute, then it will go to rest of the annotations. So before class, and then the test methods of that particular class. The after class means, so this annotated method will be run after all the test methods in the current class. This is the class level, particular class level, not for other classes, only current class. So after all the test methods are over, then after class will execute. Same after class is 
equal to after all in the J unit. So after class is, so annotation, public void after class annotation, then you write the destroy code. That's what we have seen. We closed the browser there, right? Browsing, so closing action method we have written there. So that's the, how you can, so write the code based on these annotations only. You don't need to use any main method in the framework style. So you will use only this test ng only or JNet in the real time. Next, before method annotation. The annotated method will be run before each test method. So this is the method level annotation. So this will repeat every test method before this will execute. That means some common code is there that you want to repeat that lines of code for every test method before. Then put that lines of code in this before method annotation so that first this block or this two lines or three lines of code will execute. Then every time it will go to first test method. Then after that test method is over, again, it will go to after method. So after method, what it will do? The annotated method will run after each test method. Each test method after immediately cursor will go to after method annotation. So public wide, tear down and destroy code. So this is the interview question. What is the difference between a thread before test, a thread before method? This is a method level annotation, a thread test method level annotation, but a thread before test is test tag level annotation. So that's the main difference. This and this tell these differences. This is the definitions at least. So this is the test method level annotation. Test method level annotation. Okay. This is the test method level annotation. This one. But at the before test is test tag level annotation. That one. So that's the before method and after method. So this will. Repeat how many test methods are there? First before method will execute, then it will go to test method, then after method. Again, one more test is there. Again, controller will go to before method. After before method, it will go to second test, then after method. Again, one more test method is there. Again, controller will go to before method, then third test method, then it will go to after method. So this cycle will rotate on these three annotations only before method, test method, after method, before method, test method, after method. So like that, it will rotate there only how many test methods are there. You don't need to repeat this before method multiple times. One time only you will write. So one time only will do. Only at the test method, you will write multiple times. But each test method name is different. Each at the test method name is different. So that's the all the annotations. Then Adderate data provider annotation. So Adderate data provider annotation is mainly used for supplying the data to your test method. Because in the test method only we'll type the values. The data you want to store in the data provider then supply to the test method. So that purpose Adderate data provider annotation is used. The annotated method is going to return two-dimensional object array. Remember the two-dimensional array I explained. That concept we are going to use here. Object to two-dimensional array, this data provider annotation will return. So this is the another interview question. What is the return type of data provider annotation? So what is the answer you have to give? Object to two-dimensional array, the return type. So this is the one you can write. See, pub, access modifier, data type, method name. So if you remember the method syntaxes, you can tell the written type of this method is object to dimensional array. The data provider annotation written type is <clears throat> object to two dimensional array. So where each object can be assigned the parameter list of the test method. So how many parameters are there in your test method? That parameter count you have to specify as a columns count. And the number of rows you want to repeat means so how many sets of data you want to give to your test method. That is your rows count. So 
that I already, the two-dimensional array object, how to create, I mentioned very, very clearly in Java. So that I'm going to use here, object to two-dimensional array. So data equal to new object class. This object is a class, a super class of all the Java classes. So that object class we are using here. So this method also returns object class two-dimensional array. So rows and columns. Rows tells you number of times test has to be executed. How many times your test method wants to execute? That will tell this rows count. So columns will tell you number of parameters in your test method. In test method, how many parameters are there? That count is your columns count. So here is the example I'm giving, simple example. And object to two-dimensional array, data. So new object, three rows and two columns. That means your test method has two parameters and you are providing three sets of data for the test method. That's the meaning of this three by two, two-dimensional object array means. So first row, you're storing the data. The data provider, and you see that at the rate data provider, you can give name for this data provider, any name you can provide for this data provider. And you just create after annotation immediately method syntaxes, non-static method syntaxes you have to write. But this method returns a object to two-dimensional array. I'm storing all the data, first row, second row, third row. See, the columns are column one, column two. So then return, this return type, right? Return the array, two-dimensional array. Then how you, you can map to test method. So there are many test methods are there in the test ng class, but which test method you are giving this data? How do you, how can you map that? So that you need to catch very clearly at the test data provider keyword you have to write and give the data provider name. You are giving the name here, right? So this name you give or you are not giving a name. You can give this method name. First priority is if you give a name, you give a name. Or you are not giving a name, give the data provider method name here, the at the rate test method annotation. At the rate test data provider is specifying your data provider. Which data provider? You can write multiple data providers also. You can write multiple test methods. Which data provider you are supplying to which test method? You have to clearly mention here so that this test method, see this test method has two parameters, one, two parameters. That's what the here number of parameters count is your column count. So here in the test method, your number of parameters count is your column count. You don't need to look how many columns I need to give. So just see how many columns are here. This columns count is this, the parameter count is your columns count. Sir, how to declare my rows count? Rows count, how many sets of data you want to give? How many times you want to repeat this scenario? With the different sets of data you want to give? that the different sets of data is your color, rows count. So this is how we are mapping. How we are mapping? The test method and data provider. So at the rate test bracket, data provider equal to data provider name or data provider method name you have to specify. Then this test method will go and pick the username and password automatically to iterate. First, this username value will come here. This password value will come here and it will replace here the values. Then it will go to second. Username two will come here. Password two will come here. That values will be replaced here. Again, because you're using parameters here inside the method. So the values will replace while running the test cases. Then username three value will come here and it will replace username three and password three will replace here. So in your test method, wherever you're using this parameter, that parameter values will be tested three times. This test method will repeat because three sets of data you have given. This is the one set, this is the second set, this is the third set. Three times this login test will execute. So that's a data provider annotation, how you are going to use. This is the mandatory interview question. They will ask, write a data provider annotation with an example. Okay, so make sure you, so write this entire code as it is. You store the data and you supply. This is the main, they will focus how you are using this data provider. So see data provider keyword. So the variable concept basically, variable names, how you will write 
it starts with alphabet lower case right and uh, each word uh, second word onwards capital letter so that's a naming convention so you follow and uh, all the data provider annotations are capital letter this is the classes so at the rate d capital p capital annotation names all like that only so next at the rate parameters annotation so at the rate parameters annotation is used to supply parameter values to your test method so you can supply from xml file you can store data in the xml file from there you can read to your test method so single data also you can give with the at the rate parameters annotation so that's the at the rate parameters annotation means now to do this you need to declare a parameter tag in xml file xml file you have to write a parameter tag so like you have a suit tag test tag classes tag class tag so same above classes tag which class you want to supply these parameters you write above the classes tag above you write a parameter tag parameter tag instead you have to write a name attribute and value attribute so name is the name of the parameter you have to give so what is the value for that parameter you can spe specify with a value attribute i don't know how many of you remember the basics of attribute attribute syntaxes then you can easily understand what are the attributes means so that this is the tag you will use in the xml file xml file means suit file remember that in test ng if they are mentioning suit file means test ng dot xml file so where the name attribute of the tag defines the name of the parameter and value attribute defines the value of the parameter what value you want to give for that parameter so parameter names are declared inside the class and above the method test method see this, this is how we are going to write public class parameters demo at the rate parameters so parenthesis inside you have to specify your parameters parameter one parameter two then at the rate test so public void test same parameter name this parameter data type is a string table so that's why first data type is string and parameter one this is how you will write the parameters right in the method first data type then parameter name comma this parameter data type also string so you are putting in double quotes that's why string parameter two so like this how many parameters you are declaring here that many parameters should be here in the test method also then this parameter you are using here here but this value i'm going to give from xml file testng.xml file let me show you that testng.xml file so how to create a testng.xml file for particular class so right click on the class select a testng option convert to testng and give the suit name test name and xml file location click on finish so then you will create the testng.xml file so this is the sample first suit tag name equal to suit name parallel equal to none test tag name attribute name value see parameter tag how many parameters here two parameters that's why i have to write two parameter tags so first parameter tag name equal to parameter so name equal to parameter 1 value equal to value of the parameter 1 so second parameter another parameter tag i am writing parameter each parameter one parameter tag you have to write then you have to include name attribute and value attribute so name equal to parameter 2 value equal to value of the parameter 2 suppose you assume that username password you want to supply from xml file so here name is username and value is ramesh3 at gmail.com so parameter name so name is password the value is test one two three password whatever the password password in the value attribute you have to give the value of this parameter so this is the how you can supply parameter values from xml file using at the rate parameters annotation okay then at the last at the rate test annotation at the rate test annotation you can mark your class or your test method as it is a test case 
how you can mark your test as a test case by just putting at the rate test annotation on top of that method on top of that class. If you write at the rate test, then this method will be treated as a test case. This method will be represented as is a test case. So this is the, all the different uh, uh, tests, but what are the different keywords or parameters you will use? So that I'll explain in the next class. Let me stop all the analysis.